God of War Ragnarok's post campaign is so filled with content, it could be a whole game or at least a DLC by itself. There's lots of new zones that open up later with new boss encounters, more side quests and way more unique but powerful items that will definitely change how you play. In this video I'm going to go over all of the major end game things you can do, of course with no story spoilers whatsoever and a few other secrets to help you on top, so let's jump right in. Now as soon as you finish the entire main story, immediately go ahead back at Ratatoskr to unlock the new portal gateway. You can call him by just ringing his chime and then he'll provide you with a new pouch of Yggdrasil seeds. With this you can go ahead and interact with the gateway which will now let you explore all 9 realms including Jotunheim which I really love, it's probably one of my favorite areas at this point. But it also opens up a few new teleportation points like the one in Niflheim Mist Fields which is something that you will want to access for one of the Berserker fights over here. If you don't do this you're not going to get access access to these new locations so just keep that in mind. But before finishing the main story, if you followed my previous video, you could have unlocked the massive new area in Vanaheim called the Crater plus its three additional subsections. This is where you will spend the majority of your endgame time collecting the best gear by doing new hunts, quests and upgrading everything to max. This is literally hours upon hours of new gameplay content after the main story has finished. More on that of course in just a little bit, but if you did not unlock this area yet, you can do it with a favor called Scent of Survival that starts right after a certain point towards the end of the main campaign from right here in Freyr's camp back in Vanaheim. From the camp simply follow this creature through the quest, it's pretty lengthy but totally worth it because eventually it will lead you to the new crater area. At first the map you will see is pretty small and that's because you will need to discover the rest by doing exploration and going through all of these areas. So your first order of business should be to make navigation easier and you will do that by restoring the river that's now been dried up. To reach that area with the river you need to head to the jungle location which you can do through the cave right here in the southwestern part from where you came from until you reach the other side with the jungle. From here instead of going to the broken bridge on the left, instead keep it to the right until you go over this wall and finally see the dam that's been blocking the river. This also opens up the favor called return of the river, so take the elevator up to the right, go through a crack in the wall right here and then solve the puzzle to lift the blocks and finally let the water flow. And from this point on the river navigation is now possible so you will get access to boats not just in the jungle area but in all of the three zones of the crater which you will definitely need as there's many other access points, missions and encounters that you can't reach otherwise if you don't have the river unlocked. Now from here you will find a lot of new areas by doing good old fashioned exploration. You'll also want to of course keep in mind some areas and even fights are conditioned on top of the river also by the time of day. So for that reason you will have to oftentimes call the night or the day to progress depending on the type of content but here is a general rule that you can follow. In most situations areas that are normally blocked during the daytime will open up during the nighttime so you can progress deeper into those parts. This usually also lets you open up secondary entrances from within so that you can get back to them also during the day later on. Bosses are in a similar situation and if you happen to not get a certain boss fight even though you might be in the proper location it's likely because that only spawns during the night time with quite a few unique ones that I noticed happening in that time so totally something worth checking out. The biggest here will be the dragon hunt though there's at least one or two in each of the sub zones and plenty of occasions to do some dragon hunting for some additional loot and especially end game crafting mats. These encounters are important as they provide the dragon teeth as I've said and also required for one of the best end game armors in God of War. I already touched on the subject of the dragon scale armor as well as the other hidden armor sets outside of the main story in a previous video so totally go ahead and check that one out. Another thing left to keep in mind are some of these crystalline fragments that you will notice all over the place with the orange yellow rocks that you can break to get the items inside. And you will want to break them as often as you can because you can then exchange the fragments for powerful gear back at the wishing well. Which by the way you find right here again if you just progress through the crater zones 
this will let you eventually reach this area and you can then just throw the crystals in the ponds to get various rewards there's even like four additional crystals all around the ponds that you can immediately collect and likely get already a set of items including the armor of the fallen stars that you might really love if you like spamming your runic attacks without fearing being interrupted there's going to be many more side quests that you can take part in in this location but the one that i want to focus on right now is the one called stag for all seasons that you can do for rat tusker eventually you're going to encounter some of these four stags representing the four seasons all around the major areas of the crater so you will want to actually save them and bring them back and once you've done that you can speak with the character finish the quest and they will give you the awesome round of destruction this has a chance to create an elemental storm whenever you interrupt blue attacks from enemies or whenever you parry them. The effect is basically an AoE fire, but it also has a chance to spawn a frost storm instead that lasts for a very good 10 seconds, spinning around you in a 360 degree radius, a pretty good range, while also dealing damage, applying status and stunning enemies in the process. I found this to be quite useful as it can prevent many of the enemy attacks or at least interrupt them at some point. Plus, the wide range definitely hits a lot of targets. The only downside is that it moves with you, but that can also be an upside if you tend to move all over the battlefield. But obviously the end game isn't restricted to just this zone, there is many realm shifts, berserker fights, the Maspelheim challenges and a few secret ones on top all around the 9 realms. We already focused on a few of these yesterday, so for now we'll focus on the new challenge called Remnants of Asgard that only spawns after finishing the main story. This will reveal 10 new special enemy fights around different realms, so you will have to fight against these tougher foes but they also provide some strong rewards including the Luminous, Aloy and other endgame mats that are required if you want to max out your gear. Totally worth it and you also get a special item towards the end. The last one and likely already the highest challenge in God of War Ragnarok are going to be these 12 Berserker enemies that have already spawned for you at this point but you will likely need to be maxed out if you want to beat the last one. I'm not going to spoil the fight or anything but after defeating the 12 of them there's going to be a fight with the king and it's like just awesome like on the same level maybe even exceeding that of the Valkyries back in 2018 possibly even Sigrun. But if you defeat this enemy, the final one, you're going to get a brand new weapon slash well hilt called the Hilt of Skofnung. And the description is really vague at first, the sword unleashes its power from the souls within. Well, if you paid any attention to the process of unlocking it, it's actually quite intuitive and it will call forth 12 swords that will help you in combat each attacking enemies up to 10 seconds. During that time, they can't even do anything to you, or at least it's going to be very difficult, as they will be too busy to be interrupted by the flurry of attacks. It's totally worth it even on less targets, because multiple swords can attack a single target and deal more damage in the process. And at the end of it, it's going to like just slam into the ground for some additional damage explosion. The only downside I can think of really are the 240 seconds cooldowns that you have to wait, so better make it count if you use it against bosses. But yeah, this is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.